30 and call Sawyer County Public Works meeting to order asking the clerk to call the roll, please. Ron Kingston. Sure. Mark Elwood. Yep. Mark Peters. Neil Olson. Yep. He said here, but didn't come across. Let the record indicate we have a quorum. We have two people here, Mr. Elwood and Mr. Kinsley, and we have Mr. Olson, Mr. Bissonette, and Mr. Peters by virtual. <clears throat> Number three, certification compliance open meeting law. The meeting has been noticed to the public and news media as required by section 19.84 of Wisconsin State. Thank you. Number four is the agenda. The agenda is set. Number five is public comment. Anybody have any public comment? Number six, consider approval of the minutes of the previous meeting of January 12th. Make a motion approved. Second. Motion by Mr. Hellwig, second by Mr. Peters to approve the minutes as presented. Any discussion? I'm not sure if Mr. Peters or Mr. Olson. I'm not sure. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Number seven, Sawyer County Airport report. <clears throat> Mr. Leslie. Good evening, folks. Any questions on the report before I start talking? Do I have a do I have an old one or something? Because I don't see a report. I'll read it fast. <clears throat> I don't know. Some old email. Um, uh, I know Tim put it in his report uh, as well for later in the meeting tonight. We've been putting some resources into keeping our snow removal equipment going. Uh, our snow blower in particular is an absolutely vital part of our operations. And it's, it's not only giving uh, Tim, I think, some extra gray hairs, but our operator who's running it has really been struggling too. Um, and, uh, you know, our snow removal has been different this year because we've had Thompson's out there. And Thompson's has done a very admirable job. They've done a great, great job being out there when they need to, keeping things clear, and they and they do it quickly too, which is something we've struggled with. Are they using their equipment? Or yes, not? they're using their equipment. So, and uh, you know, uh, with snow removal, I know this year we've put quite a bit of time into trying to figure out some snow removal plans, and we're still kind of we're still trying to improve on our processes. Um, but uh, overall, storm removal has gone pretty well this winter. And it's been minimal, too. Uh, you know, the last month and a half, we haven't had a lot of snow. So that'll help on the budget, certainly. Um, yes, um, you know, for February, yeah. Um, everyone's excited about the snow, myself included. But, you know, I always offer some challenges. Um, we've got four jets, four jet operations tomorrow at the airport. And uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to get them all in or out or not. You know some of the performance numbers if the runway is not clear some of the times the jets just can't get in and out you know we got one family coming up to go snowmobiling another family coming up to prep for the berkey um all sorts of different places so um but uh we're doing our best with snow removal um i can tell you uh we got uh our voa rep here today which i'm incredibly grateful for having him here today he's going to give us a presentation um, we also have Carl Kemper online um, virtually, and uh, there's a lot of stuff that's going on at the airport right now. It's busy. I'm busy with the runway rehabilitation project and the scope of that. Um, I've got emails here. We've, we've been communicating back and forth between the state and Becker Hoppy, our consultant, myself, and then I've spent a lot of time working with a lot of our corporate operators. Um, Link uh, some, uh, a lot of communication with the uh, Uline and SC Johnson because everyone's, you know, we only have one runway, you know, so the, the type of asphalt we put down to the, the weight capacities that it's uh, capable of handling, I mean, those are all really big conversations. Um, and then uh, we are also trying to rope some of the smaller projects into our runway project. Um, and uh, just today, uh, our engineers were consulting with each other, trying to figure out what options we have for removing some equipment to different areas, and including additional brushing uh, in certain areas at the airport. Uh, so there's the runway project that's going to be, that's going to be every month 
for the next couple of years is going to be keeping us busy just planning for that. Um, one of the big things is, is that we've identified some areas of concern already that may potentially be alleviated by starting a master plan, which we'll talk about that next. But um, uh, let's see, um, I have to commend Lynn for doing a good job and continuing to do a good job with hangar leases. Um, we've uh, we're really narrowed it down to about only two or three that we still have ongoing issues with. And, and uh, I think that Tom and I and Lynn and we have to get together to kind of sort some of those things out because as we move and, and go a different route now, we have different potentially legal counsel um, some of the things referencing hangar leases are uh, in the wheelhouse of legal counsel. So we've, we've got some answers, some questions that need answering here moving forward. But, but I'm sure that Tom has a master list of ongoing things that somebody else is going to inherit. <laughs> it's all under control. It's all under control. Um, As he smiles. Yeah. But uh, overall, things are going pretty well out there. I'm happy. I know that uh, me and Hayward Aviation, um, it's actually had a little bit more business, I think, in the last month or so here than we're actually accustomed to. Um, usually in the wintertime, we lose a lot of flights because the runway conditions aren't good. And, well, not having so much the last month or so has made a difference. Um, so it's nice to have a little bit of business coming in and out this time of the year. Um, I know that uh, we have uh, at Hayward Aviation some in, uh, more infrastructure investment uh, possibilities on the horizon that are going to kind of coincide with discussions with uh, the state and our master plan process because uh, anytime you do additional infrastructure it has to go somewhere um, and those are things I'm not really prepared to propose to the county at this point in time so we really don't know what the option are options are for space uh, things like fuel farms and hangars are all uh, it's pretty constrained at our airport because we don't have any really anywhere to go. We don't have any room to go anywhere. So, um, yeah, we mentioned to Tom in my reports, I'm going to try to get a little bit more detailed in reference to where we're at with the runway rehabilitation project. Probably try to put a, at least some sort of brief um, synopsis of the month, uh, every month. You know, so we can try to keep the committee apprised of what's going on. Um, the big thing with that project is, and Ron, I, I gave you that number here earlier. Uh, I believe that we finally have our final tally from the state for how much money our recent project cost county. Um, you just sent that yesterday. Those two invoices. Yep. yep. Um, so we should be back to square zero hopefully soon. And I think that the number actually surprised me and everybody else because not only did our ramp project in the spring come in under budget we had prepaid dollars left over from 2014 or 2015 that were basically used to clean the plate so now we're starting back with the state at square zero square one so moving forward with the new administration keeping tabs on that runway rehabilitation project and what the estimates are coming in for funding we have to figure out where we're going to do uh, the capital and how we're going to budget for it, or if it needs to be bonded for. The Board of Supervisors has already approved it. Um, so we have to figure out a way to do it somehow. So that'll be something else I'm sure that gets discussed moving It'll forward. It'll be discussed constantly. The administration will take care of it. It's okay. all under control. <laughs> Let's move on to letter B, please. Okay. Uh, so Matt has a short. PowerPoint presentation, short PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, I can go through it pretty quick. You guys um, kind of up here. <clears throat> okay, uh, perfect. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Um, Matt Messina, BOA uh, project manager. I handle all your guys' projects, so I'm the main point of contact if you um, don't know me already. So you guys are looking to do a master plan coming up here shortly, and it's time for you guys to do one because you haven't had one done in a while. Um, so I just wanted to give you a brief overview on what that process is and what um, is gonna come out of that. So a couple of uh, definitions here. Um, it's basically just a comprehensive study of your airport. Uh, and so it's really looking at a 
it's honing in on the short term development that you have. That's kind of like your one to three year mark of projects that you have going on, what you need, what you need to do. Um, and then it'll also look at your medium term uh, projects. That's kind of your three to seven year. And then also your long term, and that's your seven to about 20 years with kind of what you think that you have going on. Um, the non-technical definition is basically what's your report story? Um, you know, what, are you, what kind of traffic do you have coming in and out? Uh, what kind of facilities do you need to accommodate that traffic? And how are you going to get those facilities um, to accommodate that traffic? So we'll go to the next slide. Uh, these are the elements that uh, make up the master plan. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll hit on all of these elements in the uh, upcoming slides. Um, so one of those elements is public involvement. It's uh, important to keep the public uh, somewhat involved in the whole process. It's, it can vary depending on, um, you can tailor it to each airport. Some airports have a lot of public involvement. So you might have an open house kickoff meeting and then have meetings along the way. Uh, or if you go uh, kind of more on a minimal scale, you would just maybe have one at the end a public meeting to discuss what uh, your alternatives were, where your airport's going. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Um, so there's different strategies to uh, involve the public. Uh, most uh, master plans will uh, create a TAC, a technical advisory committee. The TAC is made up of uh, usually like businesses in the area, airport users, uh, you can have county staff on there. Sometimes you may even have like the DNR as a part of that. So, and they just provide input to the decision makers. So it'd be the airport management county administrator to help uh, kind of get their, uh, their input on the airport. Um, so like I said, you can have public information meetings, open houses, web pages are good to develop as well. Um, you might uh, you could possibly do that. It's a good way to put information out there and kind of just covers your base as the uh, county because uh, then if uh, somebody from the public comes and says, you know, where was all this information? Where could I have access to it? You can say, we've had this web page out there. We've put out newsletters um, to say that you've done your due diligence to inform the public. Um, and again, it's very dependent on the scope of uh, the master plan. Next slide, please. So the first uh, part of the master plan would be your existing positions, telling the story of where your airport is right now. Um, it's usually the starting point of the master plan. And uh, next slide, please. Uh, so part of this chapter, it'll discuss your airfield facilities. You know, what you have one runway, uh, say how big it is, uh, your nav aids that you have to the airport, uh, what kind of uh, either air carrier, or in your case, GA facilities, what kind of land side facilities you have. Uh, and then regional setting and existing market, that talks about what other airports are around you and what your role is in the whole national um, plan. Again, in this case, a regional uh, plan. Let's talk about land use of what you have going on around your airport, uh, whether it be residential, if you have parks or uh, things of that nature. We would also, in this part, uh, hit on the environmental um, issues that you might have around your airport. Obviously, if you guys, wetlands is a big deal because uh, that takes up a lot of your area that you have out there. <laughs> That would be hit on in that chapter. Uh, and then also the history of your airport. Uh, talk about how you got to where you guys got to right now. Uh, for you guys, a big thing would be, you know, how did you guys get an ILS, uh, which is uh, pretty unusual for, an, for a GA airport to have that. So it'd be good to talk about that in that chapter as well. Um, and then, like I said, there's environmental considerations that we would talk about in this chapter, uh, wetlands, floodplains, um, section 4F that's uh, related to uh, parks and uh, public uh, spaces for recreation. Uh, there's FAA over there if you get interested, if you want to look at uh, what FAA looks at for environmental. Um, and this doesn't, when you go through the environmental um, discussion in the master plan. This doesn't clear your pro all the projects that you have that you're going to list in the master plan. This is just to get an idea of what kind of environmental concerns you may have for these projects in the future. Once you actually go to do the project, you would actually have to do an environmental document for each project. Um, but it's good because then uh, you would bring the DNR, um, maybe the Army Corps, uh, and any other environmental agency, we would 
share this information with them ahead of time to get them on board to know that you know some of these projects may be coming down the pipeline. Next slide. Uh, so the, and then after you get through the uh, inventory chapters, you go into the forecast. This is a very um, important piece because this is starting looking at what kind of traffic you have at the airport right now, uh, what size of aircraft, how many of them, um, and then also you would look at what you're expecting in the future to uh, come in and out of the airport. And that will drive a lot of your uh, projects going forward. Uh, obviously, it's tough to do at a GA airport when you don't have a tower. Uh, you don't have somebody out there counting aircraft uh, constantly. So the way we do that is we do it through uh, either airport records, uh, like Derek's logbook that he uh, keeps. Uh, that helps a lot, but obviously Derek isn't there all the time. Um, and he's doing other things as well, so sometimes you don't capture everything. One of the ways we do it is through TMFSC data. That's your uh, flight plan that pilots file. Uh, through FAA, so you can go in and you can actually get uh, pretty good counts uh, using that data. Um, and then there's some other ways that we can go to uh, try and get an idea of what's going on out there. And again, it's it's always a, a best guess uh, what we have going on out there, and we just utilize the data that we have to try and get a good uh, idea of what's going on. Next slide. What was that base air? Uh, oh, website. What is that? Yeah, that's a uh, website where it's the official FAA website where you probably update that, don't you, Derek? Mm -hmm. uh, that's where you get uh, the count of based aircraft, aircraft that are based at the uh, airport. Yes. Yep. Uh, I think I touched on a lot of this stuff. Uh, yeah, we want to develop a realistic baseline of what you have right now. We'll develop something for the future. Um, <coughs> again, these operations. Uh, depending on what kind of traffic you have, if you have realized that you have a lot larger aircraft than what uh, your facility currently uh, comprises of, sometimes those larger operations are gonna drive uh, your movement going forward. Next slide. This is an example uh, from the Middleton Airport, which I think I shared with Derek and Tom. Um, this is kind of what we'll generate at the end. It uh, breaks out the different types of uh, the operations that will occur uh, for just for the base year and then as you can see we forecast out the number of years as well as your base based aircraft at the bottom. Next slide. Forecasts have to be approved by the FAA at the ADO which is the airport district office and that's located in Chicago uh, for you guys. Uh, so they'll approve both the forecast and the critical aircraft determination that we come up with. Um, unless uh, it says below there, it has to go to FAA headquarters if there's an EIS, environmental impact statement that we're anticipating, um, or if the forecasts differ from the TAF, which is the terminal area forecast by those certain percentages. Okay. So then after you get the forecast uh, approved and you know what your critical aircraft is, you'd go through facility requirements to say uh, what uh, types of facilities you're going to need to accommodate those operations that you're forecasting. Next slide. Um, again, it's just, it's going to, you're going to look at your runway. Do you need more length, width, strength? Um, is it in the correct orientation? Uh, uh, we look at protection zones, um, approaches, obstructions. Um, do you have adequate taxiways, parking spaces, hangar area? Uh, another thing to know would be snow removal equipment as well. That's one of the things that we can look at to say, you know, do we have um, uh, enough snow removal equipment? For most GA airports, you're eligible for one piece. Um, but during this process, we can look at that and kind of revisit it and see if uh, there's a potential for um, an additional piece with AIP funding or uh, possibly with state aid if that's something that we feel that we need to do. Okay, next slide. Uh, like I just mentioned, snow removal equipment, that's uh, the map on the right there is uh, a average snowfall forecast. So that's part of the justification requirement that you'd look at. Um, and uh, you'd look at that and then how much pavement you have to clear uh, at your airport. And that's what how they use to determine how many pieces you're eligible for. 
<clears throat> Next slide. Then after you get through uh, what facilities you determine that you need, then you go into an alternative selection where you look at different ways of how you would uh, get those <laughs> facilities at your airport. Um, obviously, you'd have to look at, uh, there's many different ways to, um, to tackle those problems, but um, so that's what this uh, section would look at. Slide. So here's a couple of examples that I had for an alternative selection. Uh, this is the Middleton Airport again. If you look at the lower left-hand corner in the blue, there's a bunch of ha uh, proposed hangars because they're looking to develop more hangar area. So this is one of their alternatives where they didn't move either of the existing runways and they said this would be the best place for hangars. And then if you go to the next slide, then they said, well, what if we move uh, the crosswind runway and we purchase land over there? Well, then we could put hangars up in that area. So that was another alternative that they had. And then you go to the next slide. Um, again, a different uh, taxiway system to be out there. And then you have hangars um, up in the uh, northern, that would be the, yeah, that's the northern uh, section there. So, so we would develop uh, something similar to that uh, to show where uh, you know, different facilities uh, could be placed. Next slide. Um, maybe inter iterative, um, going back and forth between uh, you know, the different stakeholders to see what would be the best option. Um, again, environmental considerations will be made, uh, but it's not the emphasis. It's the master plan is trying to determine what is best for the airport, um, but also something that would be realistic um, to make happen uh, environmentally. Then after that implementation of feasibility, uh, then you figure out which after you figure out what your best alternative is, figure out how you're basically how you're going to pay for it and how the timeline of that is going to work out. Um, this is uh, probably the most helpful to you guys at the um, at the county to figure out um, budgeting as well, um, figuring out how you're going to pay for it and kind of getting that sequence um, that timeline laid out so you guys can think about that. It also helps our program engineer out a lot because then we can just plug this right into your, your CIP and um, we would uh, then have a good plan going forward of how we would accomplish uh, the projects that you need to have done. Next slide. And then at the end um, of the master plan, we would create an uh, airport layout plan. So I think you guys might be familiar with this. You guys uh, have one that was done in 2007 was the last one. Uh, so this is the line work that would be associated with the end of your master plan. We, we need a new ALP that. Yep, so that's, and that's what would be um, part of at the end of this master plan. So next slide. Yeah, uh, Matt, this is Carl here with Becker Hoppy and, and everybody else, good evening. Um, one thing that I was going to touch on with the airport layout plan, and, and may, Matt, maybe you're getting here with that. Um, well, yep, you've got it there on your last bullet point there. And yeah, it's really that you need to have the project shown on your airport layout plan in order to use federal funding to do that project. So, Huge. you know, like, yeah, like, like Matt mentioned, the airport layout plan is really the end product out of your uh, master plan. And it's critical that, you know, that, that good thought goes into that airport layout plan so that when you wanna pursue a project in the future, that it's shown correctly, you know, in the correct location and, and that, that it's shown period. Yep, absolutely. So um, yeah, that's probably the biggest thing is that um, you need to have it shown on there in order to get your federal funding and state funding for that matter. And it's just always good to have a plan for things. Um, when you're when you're doing stuff out there, um, and then another big one there is the obstacle action plan, because um, you would show the airspace and what penetrations you might have to the airspace, and you would then create an obstacle action plan and figure out how you're going to clear uh, any sort of obstructions that you have to your airspace. Next slide. Here. So here's a this is the uh, your current um, sheet. I just wanted to show the difference of what you have now and kind of what it's going to turn into. Uh, so this was how we did things back in 2007 and probably up until really 2015 or so. Everything was in black and white, uh, which it's not bad. It's not a bad ALP. You can look at it and after looking at it a little harder, you can <laughs> kind of see what uh, is going on out there. But if you go to the next slide, we're now incorporating color and aerial backgrounds uh, into these ALPs. So I think it's a lot easier for 
uh, somebody to just pick up and uh, get an idea of what's going on out there and see where all the safety zones are. Um, the next slide. And again, this is your current uh, ALP. This is a uh, plan and profile of the uh, approach. So the top is obviously looking down at uh, some of the obstructions you have off of the runway. It's at the three end, I believe. Um, and then below that, you see it in the uh, profile view. Um, but now the way we do them, if you go to the next slide, I think they're a little cleaner to see. Again, we use an aerial photo um, in, the, um, in the plan view. And I think that just helps uh, make it clearer to see where these some of these obstructions are. And we have an obstruction table in there. Um, I think we're just we've gotten better over the years, and you're going to get a better ALP at the end of this uh, process. Next slide. Um, and then updating the ALP. The only time you can update your ALP is through a master plan, like you guys are proposing to do here. Um, the other one of the other ways that you could do it is through a triggering event. If uh, there was something that maybe you missed in the master plan process, uh, something that's small, uh, you can sometimes do an error report to uh, update through that process. Uh, and then the last way is uh, through an as built ALP. That's done when you finish a project that created uh, a a new uh, facility out there. So like when you guys did the taxiway uh, project, we then turned those dash lines and the solid lines. That's all an as built ALP is. It doesn't add new projects to your ALP. So, which goes back to again, standalone ALPs with no planning is not AIP eligible. Next slide. Uh, okay, and then, um, and I, again, I've kind of beat this one up a little bit, uh, that environmental um, will be part of, uh, part of this process, but it's not going to be the focus. The focus is going to be looking at what facilities you need and how we're going to get them, uh, get them done. Um, so then if we, after we get through the master plan and we would potentially go into an environmental assessment for a project, if that changes the preferred alternative, you don't have to go, you shouldn't have to go back in and do the whole master plan again. What we would do is we would just do a minor edit to the master plan, uh, depending on what it is, um, either through, uh, probably would be a narrative report that we would go back in and um, talk about what the EA did and then possibly revise the ALP. Um, but I guess what I'm getting at with this slide is you, do, you shouldn't have to go back in and redo a whole master plan uh, because of uh, a change based on an EA. Um, again, this is the same as the first slide. These are all the uh, uh, points of a master plan that uh, that we just went over and um, that will be dis, uh, will be completed through this process. What's the timeline to have that done? Uh, the, they typically take at least a year and a half, I would say, on the quick end um, for just probably completing the document between us and the consultant. And then, then it would go to FAA for approval. And sometimes there's some back and forth in that time too. So <coughs> I would a long process. I would say at least, you know, with FAA approval, at least two years. So which actually uh, with where you guys are sitting right now is uh, pretty good because we're starting the runway rehabilitation rehab uh, project. So and that's scheduled for 2024. So if we started this, um, you know, this year, this master plan, it should get close to wrapping up at the end of the runway rehab project. And then you guys would be able to um, start looking at what your next project would be, because then you'd have a full way up to date ALP and master plan. <clears throat> yep. Next slide. Um, then obviously it costs, they are uh, pretty expensive. Um, their going, going rate right now is about $350,000 for the whole, um, the whole process. A big chunk of that is an aerial survey. Um, it would be, the airport would be flown and um, <clears throat> that is going for about, I think those are like 70,000 um, roughly. <clears throat> it pays out. What's that? It's, it it's a 95.55. Good point. 
Yep. It's uh, 90% it's an AIP project, airport improvement project eligible to feds. So it's 90% feds, 5% state, 5% Sawyer County. So the, the cost for Sawyer County would be $19,250 estimated. Yeah, we would have to negotiate the contract with the consult, the selected consultant first. So, <clears throat> well, yeah. Yep. Um, <clears throat> And there's specialty consultants that do this kind of stuff too. Yep. Um, I have uh, Matt gave me a couple of copies of recent master plans to other airports, and I mean they're they're exhaustive, hundred pages potentially or more. For it's, yeah. Some of the bigger ones. I'll let you finish your slide before I make my comments. No yeah. problem. Go with this slide. <clears throat> Next slide. Um, and then yeah, once you have a master plan done. Uh, it should be shelf life is typically 20 years so you shouldn't have to go back and do another master plan like this again for another 20 years if there's stuff that comes up in the meantime of that again little things we can do a, a small narrative update to the master plan um, and add something that pops up within those 20 years uh, or it could be a, a pen and ink um, which is when you literally just take a pen and go on your alp and um, like i just did one for uh, adding a piece of uh, land uh, to an AOP a future <clears throat> acquisition that we were looking at that wasn't on the uh, already approved AOP. So sometimes we can make those happen. Um, but again, once you get this master plan done, you're, uh, you should be good for 20 years and you wouldn't have to go back in and do another one. Next slide. Last slide. That's it. So um, I went through a lot there. I uh, tried to go as quick as I could. But um, kind of, if you guys have any questions right now, I'd I might answer some of the questions they have if I have a few moments of time. <clears throat> you know, the biggest part of this, I think, is really it's establishing a clear vision of the airport moving forward. You know, our airport in particular, I can tell you, north of Highway 8 in Wisconsin, there's not an airport that's gotten the funding that we have in the last eight years. You know, once we started the ILS project, that really catapulted us into another level of airport it really did and now we have all the amenities to go with it and taxiways and concretes and and um <clears throat> now moving forward you know i mean there's two years and some months left on my current airport manager agreement you know um all these things that we're discussing is just my life um a big part of it uh you know is trying to th think about what we're going to do in the future. And that's not necessarily my decision to make as an airport manager. You know, we need to bring it to this committee. So one of the things I'd like to ask for is I'd like to, you know, maybe on next month, if we need more information, that's fine, but try to get the county to uh, approve the expenditure of the 19,000 estimate to start this master plan process. Because as your airport manager, <clears throat> this is going to aid me in helping educate not only myself at what our airport options are in the future, but also being able to educate future county administrators and future county board supervisors. Now, this is a really important process for an airport to go under, especially since you know we've gone through such a big transformation in recent years. You know, and there's a lot of parts to this. I know that he touched on having a tax committee. You know, I'm only one person. You know, and. <clears throat> This is a pretty big deal of master plan and for the county to, to consider what they're going to do at the airport, you know, past this runway project, you're putting in a new runway, you're getting another 20 year lease on life with this project. You know, we got, you know, three big outstanding items. Uh, one, I know if Tim was here, he would say, you know, we need a snow removal equipment building. Uh, down the list, I can tell you the lifeblood of every airport is hangars. We have no clear way of expanding our capacities or our hangars at the airport. You know, we talked about the national uh, based aircraft inventory program. We only have 20 uh, uh, full time airplanes at the airport. I could tell you if we had more hangars, we'd have more airplanes, which would mean more revenue back to the county um, and would move more options. Um, you know, I think it's important for the county to look at the airport as a whole and consider what the plan is for the future. You know, and the last thing in the list is a new terminal building. Um, I know we're going through a pretty exhaustive process of remodeling the terminal building right now, but let's be honest, it's probably not going to get a new one for 10 years anyways. But, you know, that building's 50 years old now. And I think that the master plan, the plan in particular would really lay out a clear path moving forward because for our airport, for the flight volumes and the people that are coming in and out, you can go to a lot of airports that don't have nearly the traffic that Sawyer County does and their terminal buildings Put ours to shame. 
you know, and I think it's important to look at that moving forward into the future, those types of things. When is it going to be feasible for the county to start these processes, you know, and when is it going to be feasible to, to get funding for it, you know, and we're obviously all these projects are all AIP eligible and we need to have a new airport layout plan anyways, which this master plan would establish a new ALP, which would take us into the future. So it's my recommendation that maybe next month we try to draft the you know, next month or the month thereafter. I know we've got some changes in legal counsel currently uh, trying to get the approval to send it to the full county board to start this process because on the same time, Matt didn't touch on it. I know Carl Kemper is probably chopping up a bit to say something. Uh, there are other advantages for starting the master plan right now too that we've identified as part of our runway rehab project. There's some parts to the airport that aren't exactly the way the FAA wants to see them, you know, as far as center taxiways and different things like that. And if we could say, hey, we're going to address these issues as part of our master plan, it'll take the edge off a little bit with our runway rehab project and the FAA will more than likely approve us doing what needs to be done. Um, yeah, yeah, good point there, Derek. And Matt, do you want to weigh in on that at all? What is the you know, you mentioned that the county would need to initiate the master plan in order to uh, be able to keep those center taxiways where they are until the appropriate planning is done to determine what's going to be done with them. Um, when when do you need the county to make a commitment for the master plan in terms of that? Um, I guess it'd be nice if, I mean, we have meetings in, coming up in March for the 23, uh, 2023 discretionary list. So. Um, right now, the scope of the project for the runway rehab is to rehab the runway, and that's it. Um, and there is a center taxi lane uh, out at the airport that comes in kind of in the middle of the runway. Uh, current FAA guidance says that you shouldn't have that there. And when it, they say whenever you're touching the runway, you should fix any geometry issues. Um, so they would probably let, want us to see us remove that taxiway as part of the project. But the problem is we don't show that being removed on the current ALP. Um, so what I would like to do is tell them, well, we're going to be updating your ALP um, through this master plan process so that um, they would say, okay, we'll just, we're not going to touch that taxiway with this project. And we're not going to remove it with this project, but we'll, we'll figure it out with this master plan ALP process. But I understand you guys got to, um, you know, approve it first. Well, we have to do a resolution has to be drafted first. And I mean that Tom, Tom and I and legal counsel has to, even get together to draft that to even bring it to committee for this committee's consideration before it even goes to the county board. That's not happening this month. Sure. Uh, but next month, potentially, um, I don't know where we're at in that process. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess I would just say as soon as you guys can, um, and, and all I need is just an email from Tom or I guess Tom's replacement in a month or so um, of, uh, you know, saying that you guys want to go forward with starting the master plan process. And at that point, I would put out a consultant selection to start the process. I'm assuming I'm right with having to draft a resolution to present to committee to go to full county board or something like yeah, this. We can we can put something together. I think timing wise, we're going to be in really good shape because um, a lot of things kind of coinciding at the same time. One is the board elections and you know the the um, selection of this committee. You know there might be some turnover on on board and in this committee. So it'll give this committee an opportunity uh, over that two year period to be. Um, cohesive and, and not have changeover in the middle of this big project. Um, and so that'll be that'll work to our advantage as well. So we, we can get something together um, so that we're ready to roll when, when the elections are over and this uh, committee is established and uh, we'll be getting the ground running then. Okay, sounds good. Any questions for the man while we have him here? Uh, airport related questions. I mean, he's our guy. Um, between Carl and, and Matt, I, I don't know if you have other airports managers call you as much as I do. I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I lean on these guys really hard for me to try to do my job, you know, day in and day out, Carl in particular. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's sometimes it's not easy. You know, when I, these guys are, are aviation professionals in what we're discussing, everything airport. So um, just know that I'm working with these guys regularly and, and anytime you ever ask me questions more and often, more and often I'm backstopping them with the knowledge that these guys have. So it's not just me out there. It's it's kind of a whole team of people uh, trying to make the thing spin, turn, go. 
fly. Fly, here you go. <laughs> no, I have none. Mr. Vincent, you got any questions for these gentlemen? Yes, I do. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> okay, because I've been involved in, in, I don't know how many master plans over the last three decades. So, you know, what you presented tonight is pretty straightforward. Um, I do have a question, though, because on one of your slides, uh, I just want to make sure I'm interpreting it right. But you basically, you know, don't call me verbatim, but the environmental compliance isn't, I mean, is considered. However, it's not the emphasis. Now, go down to the later one of the end slides. Uh, it indicates in your presentation that the master plan would be amended if the environmental assessment couldn't result in a FONSI. And so is the slide that I'm referring to first, is that just kind of like a, a statutory checklist you do to it? Because I mean, if you're going to do this, you want to get it right from the get go. You you don't want to. Um, you would want to make sure that you're going to get a finding no significant impact at the end. So, I don't know how do you, how do you guys do that? Am I reading that right? Yeah, I think uh, yeah, and that's why we consider environmental. We have environmental considerations during the master plan. Um, exactly, you don't want to be in that situation where you you go through this master plan process and then you get to the environmental and you aren't able to to do the plan as it was drawn up in your master plan um so i personally haven't had that situation come up where uh the environmental assessment has been different than what was shown in the master plan um so again hopefully we don't get to that situation but if we do we could go back into the master plan and amend it um you know slightly to to get something that would get through an environmental assessment. Because it would seem to me that if we're going after federal funds, it being a federal action, we're gonna to have to do NEPA. And, you know, I mean, if this, if, and, and again, you know, I mean, I don't know what the future plans for the airport are, but let's hypothetically say you're gonna, um, you're gonna encounter something that, uh, triggers beyond a, an environmental assessment and going to an EIS. Doing it, contracting with an environmental firm to do an environmental assessment pales in comparison to having full-blown environmental impact statement. So, um, okay, well, I just wanted to, that was really, I just wanted to know that I was looking at that right, that, um, uh, that the initial uh, considerations, uh, they were looking at everything because you don't want to have to go back at some later point and, and amend your master plan because of environmental things. So. Yep, correct. That's why we look at it, um, you know, kind of from an overview during the master plan and um, make sure that we're putting stuff in the plan that's realistic, realistic to get to get through a um, through a NEPA document. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Olson, you got any questions? I'm good, Mr. Chairman. Sorry about that. That's all right. Thank you. Mr. Peters? Uh, yes, I guess just one thing. Uh, I didn't notice that this uh, slide program was going to be in the, uh, in the, what we're getting tonight. Uh, will that still be there? Will that be recorded here? Yes, we'll it's have okay. it available. Okay. okay. And I just wanted to uh, uh, second Mr. Bissonnette's concerns about making sure that we take care of things at the beginning rather than have a surprise later on. Thank you. Carl, anything else you want to add? No, Mr. Chairman, thank you. 
45 minutes. It's been a while since we talked about the airport for 45 minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, uh, my contact information is on the last slide. So if you have any other questions, um, in the meantime, feel free to reach out to me directly with anything. Thank you for your valuable time. No, no, no Thanks for driving up. Yeah, absolutely. Do anything else, Derek? I, I don't, don't think so. Stop out to see me. Hey, terminal building's looking pretty good. I don't, I've heard people said so. I don't know. I got to get Tom out there before he leaves us for good. That's for sure. <laughs> and Tom, is this your last committee with us? No, I'll be uh, at the March committee. Okay, but you're not going to call in sick. You don't have any vacation days built up or anything. No, there it is. Okay. I'll be here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gerger, thank you for your patience. Just a few comments on the Highway Commission report. My first sentence, frequency of snow and ice control activities has decreased. I jinxed myself. We're out all day fighting. Uh, probably back at it again tomorrow. Uh, everything else in there, does anyone have any questions on anything I had on the report? Highway Conference, Heart of the North, Mine Safety. We're doing some flagger recertification here soon. Now, how do you do that? Because you're going to hire the flaggers yet. I'll probably have to give them another workshop when they come in. You yeah, I've given it. I've given it so many times. That, yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyway, I'll, we'll recertify the entire crew. Then when we hire flaggers, um, I'll bring them in, and usually it's two to three people or four. You will to hire people off the street. Yeah, he's going to want to come back. <laughs> I have a feeling. Um, just something that didn't get on here because I just found out about it yesterday. But I received communication from LCO Realty that I'm going to be getting a letter from LCO Tribal. Um, I think Chairman uh, Lewis Taylor for investigating a roundabout at the intersection of um, County Road B and K. I responded um, that they want to know the format. I said a letter is just fine to me that I could bring to committee. But I questioned whether um, BIA had engineering on staff that could do a just a preliminary, just to just to look at it and see if we, you know, with existing uh, buildings and businesses out there, if we have enough room even for a roundabout. If if you've been to any of the real roundabouts, not those little dinky ones in Rice Lake, but a real roundabout that meets the standards, they take up a lot of room. And maybe we have it out. There. I mean, I don't know. So. That's something um, that probably be coming up next month. I'll probably have the official letter from, from uh, LCO on that. How do we handle that? If they request it, what do we do? Yeah. If they request it, I think we would do it, uh, enter in a uh, cooperative agreement with them. Um, there's a, Tom and I have talked, there's a lot of money coming right now to counties, um, tribes, Towns, municipal, other municipalities, a lot of money is coming through through a lot of these programs. That we recently have that it's um, bipartisan infrastructure law, and there was a 15% carve out immediately from all the money that's going to all tribes. So there's going to be a lot of money available out there. Um, I've talked to Tom about making sure that we have the cost shares, and I guess, you know. Talking to Tom, I, I, I'm in 100% agreement with them. Uh, it, if we have to take out loans, I mean, if we have to pay 20 cents to get a dollar, that's a pretty good deal, you know? So, I mean, they're competitive though. They're not just handing them out, but so I guess when we get there, we'll have to see how we actually handle it because um, we don't have anything planned out there right now, but between safety funds and some of this uh, bill money, so when, say if they, they put the document in, it sounds like they're going to, um, the process then do we have to, is it something that you can check out to see if it's feasible or do we have to hire someone? Or? Well, that's what I was stating. Initially, we're gonna do just uh, have BIA staff, I'm, they're checking in to see if BIA staff can come down and just look at it, you know, take some measurements, okay. um, go, go to the, what they call a facilities development manual, based on the ADT, the average daily traffic. Okay, this is this is what size of a roundabout we need at this location, okay? And if it's gonna be encroaching on 
on the Dollar General and yeah, even your the, Rice Lake size look seem big for that yeah. area. So I, I don't know. I mean, it's something we can look at. Um, I mean, to just not even look at it. I think we 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 owe it to the tribe. They, they're going to make an official request. We owe it to them to look at. You know, if if we can't do it, we can't do it. And, and you know, at least we'll have a basis for telling them that. If we can do it, hey, let's let's do it. I it mean, may it, alleviate it, a lot of crashes. Yes, there. it would. It's a good place, Mark, to have one. Really. Yeah. Oh yeah. Agreed. You know. I don't want to brag, but that was kind of my idea that I planted the seed in the chairman's head. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, Brian. Okay, we won't talk about that, Brian. Well, well, it, yeah, I can't tell you. I can't tell you over the years how many accidents I've seen there. I've seen so many vehicles just blow through the the red lights. I mean, it, it's 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 a recipe for disaster if we don't figure something else out. You're you're exactly right, Brian. And you're you're old enough to remember when those were stop and go signs, stop mm -hmm. signs. Yep. That was really bad back then. <laughs> well, good job, Brian. Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully we have enough room there. Um, and I'm glad Nita got with you, Gary. I was going to talk to you about it anyhow, but I'm glad she uh, informed you what you're going to want to consult with you on that. So, okay. Anybody else have questions for Gary about his mission report? I just want to compliment him on the county roads on the res. They're pretty good, actually, Gary. But well, thank me now. Great crew. Now, when I, you put your town of Hayward hat on, we'll have a different conversation. <laughs> Whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> we got a new road boss. I'm getting a lot of compliments, but that's another hat. Yeah. I don't have that hat with me tonight. <laughs> Mr. Olson, Mr. Peters. I'm good, Mr. Chairman. No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Let's move forward with. Uh, Okay. Every every February, um, all the um, existing ATV and UTV routes come up for renewal. Um, so um, discussion and possible action for, with the Public Works Committee. And um, I sent a, on January 26th, I sent an email to LCO um, looking for comment if they had any input on it. And what I received back was that they had received no comment from conservation wardens, wardens and that um, it should be perceived. They, there were no issues. They had no comments. So, um, but they were asked. That's important. Yes. And we've got representatives from uh, Sawyer County Snowmobile and ATV Travel Alliance. Uh, as you guys heard earlier, Don is retired. Um, he's got people stepping in. I don't know who's going to um, be the, the key person yet. But um, we, we did determine after they came out to the office to visit me, we don't actually have someone come in every year and sign the form. Every year I go through all the route agreements and I, I take a little red pen and I, and I put the, the revised. Um, Next year on it? Yeah, I put that when it's approved that we approved it. So I'll, I'll have on there approved 2822 on them. And, and um, well, that will be your next flag or besides. Yeah. So um, just to um, to relay on to the committee, I haven't had any issue, any, nothing come to me. Um, you know, in past years, we have had a few issues, but, and, and we've, we've addressed them or tried to, but we haven't had anything as of late recently that I'm, that I've been made aware of at the highway department level. So we don't, you don't foresee any changes to the trails except for the one that is the uh, being worked on, oh, yeah. the detour one. That isn't even in our. That's that's a that was a total. That's a temporary request. That, that, so that's um, got nothing to do with nothing these. to do with these. These are the these yeah. are the ones that we actually and attached into the agenda is our resolution that we adopted in 2018 and a blank letter of agreement. These are the. The trails that have that letter of agreement, the okay. letter under whatever the wording, letter of agreement, letter of understanding. So I would make a motion to approve the annual renewal of the ATV UTV 
um, document. That's fine. Do we have a motion by Mr. Howick to approve? I'll second that. This is Ed Peters. Thank you. Second by Mr. Peters. Any other discussion? I have a question. Okay, so the motion is to approve these, but ultimately it's going to the county board for final approval, correct? No, this no. stays here at the committee level. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you, uh, I don't have my, can you scroll back down? I wanted to see the last route because although our, see my wardens didn't say anything to, to me about getting this. I am assuming it came, Gary, you must have sent this to Nita, right? Yeah, and she indicated she sent it to you and the wardens. Okay, um, because I don't know, I was trying to see on here. Now this first list of roads, I don't have any issue with, but Okay. No, okay. I'm I'm fine. Um my issue is more with the towns than uh, the county, so okay. Gary's done probably about eight o'clock we got one on the words other hat. <laughs> <laughs> You're breaking up, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Howling. We have a second by Mr. Peters. Any other discussion? Hearing that, all in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Letter C Intergovernment Agreement between the Northwest Regional Wisconsin Counties for Mutual Aid. This is just formalizing what we already do. Uh, this came up as a topic of discussion back when COVID was just coming into play here into our operations and uh, DOT was really concerned what would happen if we went through and, and uh, we had just a total, it went through our, our whole operation and, and everyone was quarantined and couldn't work. What would we do? And, and we responded to them, hey, we, we got this covered if, if something happens to Sawyer County we already know that Russ County would come up, Washburn would come, Douglas. We we know this, and because we we have a great relationship with our, our Northwest region, it's comprised of nine counties. So that was starting probably in 2020. These talks were taking place. Well, it, now it's the point where they want it. Uh, when I say they, it, it's it's. I think it's basically the between the DOT and our Wisconsin Highway. County Highway Association wants this formalized. So uh, what we've done here is this is just agreement for Sawyer County to enter into this with the other counties and the, and the other eight counties are all listed on here. And uh, what we're looking for is approval for us to um, sign the agreement and it would be signed with eight other counties. So we'll meet at one of our commissioner meetings and we'll all have nice fancy pens and we're going to sign um, all these things and distribute them around the room and get copies made. And so when I return back to Sawyer County, I will have this with nine um, signature sheets on it. That's what the entire document is. Of course, I left them off because they're blank at this time. Questions, concerns? And it's of no cost to Sawyer. I mean, if, if if we provide mutual aid, we get paid mm -hmm. and according to, you know, charge up policies that's stated in here, uh, Wisconsin Uniform Cost Accounting Manual. And if we require uh, mutual aid, then we pay for it. And, and like I said, we're doing it right now. Yeah. If we have a situation where we're short trucks, we'll call Russ County, we'll call uh, Washburn County. Hey, can you guys spare? couple, two or three trucks. We're doing it already. So. So Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the North West Wisconsin Mutual Aid Agreement. Thank you. Motion by Mr. Howley to approve the agreement. Second. 
I see a hand up. Mr. Olson? I will second. Thank you. So the motion by Mr. Howard, second by Mr. Olson. Any further discussion? Uh, Gary, I just, it's, this is a, a minor thing, but I just noticed that Northwest are t is two words. Isn't Northwest just a single word or is this, is this part of the group's official name? Let me look up here and see. I didn't draft this. Yeah, it's probably just a name. Yeah, I don't know. They've got it in several instances. Every every instance is two words. So, um, but he's, he is correct. Yeah, I I don't know. Well, that that's fine. It just it it, it looked unusual to me. That's all. Yeah. Good catch. Yeah. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Hadley, second by Mr. Olson. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Don't forget about your other half, eight o'clock. I'll be out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, maintenance department report. Tim Hangberg contacted me today and he's got a project going down at an Oasis building. He asked if he could stay with that or if I wanted him to come up, I told him to stay with that and get it done. He did provide us a report. If there's any questions about it, his report. I have a question. When did we, did, did we, I thought that we were in the discussion process as far as what was going to happen with that Oasis building. But I, it, it looks like there's been a decision made to put the veteran services in there. Well. When that come up? Yes, that's a good question. Yeah, um, the point came to the administration was completely capable of making decisions where to move people around to, and this is how they decided to move them around. And I was okay with that. I guess this, I didn't know about it. Yes. Yeah, oh. This committee decided to keep the building. Right. And so just like any other portion of the building, we move staff where it's appropriate. So we're moving uh, veterans because they need to be moved out of that building. Um, so that's part of what... Um, Tim was doing down there is, is making that space accommodated for uh, the office space re uh, required by the veterans um, activities down there. I guess I was just confused on the, or I am confused, whatever, that when we discussed at the last meeting that, that we were under, we were under discussion as far as what was going to happen with it. And then I read that and I'm like, gee whiz, who the hell made that decision? Well, I made the decision on, on operations. You made the decision on keeping the building. Am I, that was brought up. You know, I'm a Seca, though, no, that I just want to make it sure in my head that we said that. Also down there is going to be the ARDC. ARDC. And ADRC. Yeah. ADRC. Okay. So that's good use of the building. No, oh, yeah, it is. I just was. Any other questions for the maintenance? Hearing none, we'll move to number 10, courtroom remodel update. The bids are coming in on February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to add? Um, yeah, the, the bids for the construction uh, are due on the 14th, so there's a um, uh, bid opening on the 14th and then uh, depending on how that goes and if there's any clarification needed from uh, contractors we'll get those questions and answers sorted out we hope to make uh, the board meeting and if not then we'll we may have a special board meeting so that we can get those bids approved and keep moving on that uh, tomorrow morning there's um, discussion on the finance committee regarding the bonding, uh, the, the debt issued for the construction of the courthouse. Um, as you recall, that, uh, that bonding authorization uh, happened previously. So now we're proceeding with the, uh, the procedure of issuing the bonds. So our uh, bond consultant, um, PMA, will be at finance tomorrow to discuss that process uh, the bids for the bonding will occur uh, at the March board meeting, uh, and then we'll receive those funds in April. So it kind of depends on uh, what happens with the, uh, the bids coming in on the 14th to see where we're at. Here. 
Questions? Moving along. Number 11, future agenda items. Question regarding the uh, master plan for the airport. It has to move forward. So should that be on the agenda for March or wait for April? I think we can put it on for March and get get the preliminaries out of the way, do a, a budget adjustment adjustment that's necessary for the funding. I don't recall that we put anything in the budget for that. So if it's needed, uh, we can accommodate that um, for your approval or for your consideration. Um, so then you would be ready to roll, you know, in April, May for the uh, so that's the 19,000. The new committee will be seated in May. So they can start with it. Yep. That wasn't a firm number, though. It didn't seem like that 19,000. So how would we, like, you know what I'm saying? Up to X amount of dollars. Okay. Gary, do you have something else? Um, you got 25 minutes. That's what you have. Anybody else have anything for future agenda items? Um, obviously, there's going to be more stuff for the court, courtroom remodel. And I do have a question yes. on that, real quick. What was that article in the paper about LCO? I, f I forget the word that they LCO, the, the retrocession. Yes, that one. What, is, what does that mean, I guess? Well, it means that they're looking into. Um, um, you want me to address this? Please, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the right person was, was here. Back in the 1950s, the federal government passed Public Law 280, which gave the state criminal jurisdiction over reservation lands as well as concurrent civil jurisdiction. And so there's a process that you can go through to retrocede from public law 280. However, it's nothing going to be overnight. The, the tribe would have to demonstrate that it can um, take criminal cases. I mean, so that means having a court, public defender. I mean, there's a lot of, we would have to have a jail. We'd have to have MOUs for prisons, stuff of that nature. So, um, yeah, I don't even know how that got put out there, but it's something that the tribe has been looking at for 20 years. So, um, you know, I guess they're uh, they're looking into it anyhow. So it's really preliminary. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That really helps my P P mind. Thank you, Mr. Bristnett. Yep. That brings to another question. I don't know if you asked here or not, but P brain. Mr. Channing, could he be asked the question? What happens if they move forward? What happens to us here? Yeah, I have spoken with Mr. Channing, the uh, district court administrator. Um, I can follow up with him. He um, is aware of it. I did send him the articles. And obviously, they've heard about that in the past. I mean, the, the city's also talked about municipal courts in the past. Um, you know, the tribe talking about retrocession. So there's, you know, those other things that have been out there that they're aware of as well. And they've, they've got the statistics on the numbers. And they, perhaps he can address that further if need be. Maybe that's something that we want to put on the county board so that all the board members are abreast of what's going on. Perhaps. Just a thought. All right. Thank you, folks. Meeting adjourned.